Hi, fellow ant keepers, welcome back to the Ants Subong YouTube channel. It is time for another Ants Subong Tips video. I try to make a tip video every once a month. I know many of you have been using my tips as a routine for your ant keeping journey. I am truly honored. Without further ado, let's begin the Ants Subong Tip video number 12. Zephobas morio, also known as superworms, are darkling beetle larvae. They are nicknamed for their larger size and nutritional potential as food and feed compared to yellow mealworms. Superworms is consumed by humans in some countries, one that I know of is in Thailand, which I have tasted myself. Superworms are also sold extensively by pet stores as treats for reptiles, birds and small mammals. In the past I have bred superworms before, on a small scale for my pet ants, but I have since stopped. I am also happy that some of you managed to follow my guidance to make your own mini breeding farm with fruitful results. If you are one of them, do shout out in the comments. Here, I'm going to show you how to prepare superworms to feed your ants colony. Do keep in mind that this is my way of preparing, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. It can be entirely up to you to prepare however you want. The way I am preparing is based on my experiences. Before I begin, let me show you the so-called scissors I use. I know some of you were confused with the previous Ants Subong tip video. In the video I kept mentioning scissors, but I'm not actually using one myself. Instead, this very sharp thing is called a thread snipper or shearer blade. I love it as it allows me to control and feel my cut whenever I dispatch a feeder insect. The ridges on both sides of the blade allows me to grip further front, almost at the tip of the snipper for better control and placement. The blades are thin, and it will give me a clean cut. This snipper blade is very sharp, so do be careful. I know there are better quality ones out there which cost hundreds. Let's get on with the video, the very first thing I do like always is to dip the superworms in hot water, preferable at boiling temperature. This temperature will dispatch and kill the worms immediately. Superworms do struggle for a longer period of time if the water is below boiling temperature. I dip the worms for at least 5 to 10 seconds to make sure it's dead. They will stop struggling immediately. The superworms are strong, just make sure you use the right tweezer to grab them, as they can flick themselves off from your grasp. Also do be careful if you choose the mature ones, they can bite. It will not be painful, but there will be a sharp pinch. A mature superworms are usually about 4 months old already. I always choose the mature superworms as they have more flesh. The way I know if they are mature is to count their body segments, usually 11 to 12 segments and is 4 to 5 centimeters in length. That is before you dip them in boiling water, they will shrink. Firstly, you should remove the head part of the worm, use a tweezer to press down on the intestine that protrudes. Then gentle pull away the body of the worm to extract the intestine. It will snap off once it reaches the end. If you have trouble locating the intestine in the head part, you can try it at the tail end part. Cut the tail end just above the anal. Again, same thing, press down the intestine that is protruding and pull the worm away gently to expose the intestine. 
If you have removed the head already, it will just slide out easily. The second most important part for me is removing the superworm intestine. I usually do not skip this part as it is very crucial, well at least for me. The content of the intestine is a sticky liquid, sometimes small ants do get stuck in it if it flows out of it. Another reason why I removed it, the worms will retain their freshness longer. Decomposition starts from the intestine, and it turns flesh into a blackened state which renders it uneatable. If the intestine is removed, the ants will have a longer feeding period before the flesh spoils. They may even be able to finish it without wasting any precious protein. The next thing you want to do is to cut the superworm. I usually cut them following their body segments. You should cut in between the segment plates as they are much softer in between. Cutting between those soft connecting segments will reduce the compression from the scissors, so that the flesh will remain whole. If you want to cut anywhere other than the soft segment areas, it is important that you use the sharpest scissors, as cutting through the hard shell will definitely damage the consistency of the flesh. Every part of the worm can be fed to the ants, even the head and the tail end, but just make sure you snip off the end of the tail so that the ants can get to the flesh end. For test tube feeding, there are two ways which I usually do it. The first method is to put the worm cut segments in front and the sugar or honey water behind as you slide the feeder tray in. The ants will instinctively pull the worms towards themselves, therefore it is best that you put the worm segment in front, so that it won't catch in the sugar water. Another method for plating is to have two ends with the worm segments, and in the middle the honey water. This is useful for a longer test tube, as you can push the feeding tray deeper. They can feast on both sides of the tray. If you have a big colony, just stack them up. For those who don't know, the feeder tray is actually a DIY plastic straw. If you are interested to make some for yourself, you can watch how I made the straw by clicking on the iCard above at the end of this video. Many of you have been asking me about how to keep meal worms or superworms. I do understand why you asked that question, they die easily, stink up the room and attract flies. For a start, you want to buy superworms which have a shine on their body. This is a telltale sign that the superworms you are getting is not near expiry, meaning close to death. Secondly, you do not want to buy too many, if you don't have the large enough containers to keep them. Yes, they need a big space to be able to move around. If you put them in a small cramped place, they will stack on top of each other and suffocate. Only buy what is enough for the week or so, and once you get them home, do place it in big container immediately. Fill the container with unprocessed rolled oats as bedding medium. The bedding serves as a food source, a space for them to hide, and should be layered only 1 to 1.5 inches thick. Do not put more than 3 inches of bedding on it as it will suffocate the worms. You don't really need to feed or give water to the superworms, as they are carnivorous and will eat their dead comrades. Giving food and water will cause many problems, such as fungus and mold. You always want to keep the container dry and allow air ventilation. I can assure you that if you follow this guide, the superworms will last for 2 to 3 weeks. For the first time, I am dropping another bonus tip on top of this video. I often get too many questions on why the ants drag the food into the nest. Countless questions on how to remove the moldy food which has invaded the nest, making it less appealing. I know how you feel and I am also disgusted with the mold outbreak. The thing about keeping ants, is many times the ants don't do the things you want them to do, unlike mammals. So, through experience you tend to plan ahead, so that it won't happen again. Here, I am making a feeding room. A feeding room, you asked? It is a place that will allow the ants to feed, but does not allow the ants to bring the food out. This is the container which we will use to make the feeding room. Let's make some holes, it acts as entrances, but not too big. Just make it enough for ants to enter. 
You can make as many holes as you want, but just make sure is no larger than the food you will be placing inside. Let me put in some cut up super worms, the ants can feed, but they will never be able to drag away the food into the nest. This will greatly help you to avoid the food in nest problem. Heck, it can even make your cleaning chores much easier. Do note that some ant species require chunks of food to be delivered into the nest to feed their larvae. Before I forget, I want to inform my fellow ant keepers that our ants food has been upgraded to version 3.0. I have retired the previous food version released almost a year ago now. You will get them for free as usual with terms and conditions applied. I hope this ants subong tip video will help you in your ant keeping journey in one way or another. Again, my tips have always been quick and easy to make and cost you less or next to none. It is definitely not for beauty or aesthetics, but what is a pretty product if it does not work as intended? This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Ants Subang.